Today, we're gonna see what are the top 10 worst states here in 2024, everyone's favorite subject outside of Mississippi. So how do you decide which is the worst state? Well, if it's just like one subject, like the worst state when it comes to poverty, it's easy. You just look at the poverty rate and there you go. Worst healthcare, you gotta look at two things, access and outcome. Again, simple. But if you wanna see what the overall worst states are, you have to look at the bigger picture. What we did was we took the 30 most common things people used to judge a state. We gave each state one point for each time they showed up in the top 10 of all the categories. Is it perfect science? No. Is it interesting? Yeah. Yes. Some of the stats we used were serious, like domestic violence, healthcare, and murder rate, while others not so serious, like political climate, traffic, and weather. Now, we're not going to go over where every state ranked on every single subject. That would get quite tedious, I'm sure. So I'll tell you how many times they showed up in the top 10 and some of the more interesting stats that they were in the top 10 with. Some also overlap, like murder rate and violent crime. Kind of the same thing, but they're a little bit different. High school graduation rate and school rankings. Again, kind of the same, but different. Got it? Get it? Good. Let's take a look. Number 10, West Virginia. West Virginia's got its fair share of struggles, sort of like a one-legged man trying to win a tap dance contest. The king of all West Virginia struggles is jobs. Lots of folks there have a tough time finding work that pays well enough to survive, which considering they're one of the cheapest states, Theoretically, that shouldn't be hard to do, but it is. Back in the old days, it was pretty easy, but coal ain't covering the bills these days. For most of West Virginia's industrial history, coal employed almost half the residents either directly in coal or in some kind of supporting industry, like indirectly. These days, it's closer to 10%. Residents keep saying coal is coming back, but it's not. They may have slowed the bleeding, it'll never return to its former glory. The situation they're in is sort of like this. Let's say in 1980, a single coal mine employed 900 people, and in 2010, it had gone all the way down to 300 people. Here in 2024, it's employing 325 people. That's not a win. That's better than it was in 2010, but it's not coming back. It's not just the coal mine either. You got a lot of health stuff, health problems, and West Virginia are a serious problem. I mean, besides the basic black lung that everyone talks about, they're dealing with opioid addiction, an older than average population. These are hardworking people. They are great people, wonderful people, the ones I have met. Never had a problem with any of them. And they pride themselves on how hard they work. The downside is, as you get older, that hard work, you start paying for it in the form of a bad back, bad knees, anything else. Because there are financial problems in this state, they also have a lot of infrastructure falling apart and they also have a lot of educational shortcomings when it comes to budget. They are recovering from the opioid addiction issues they had, let's say, five years ago. It's gotten better. It's not perfect, but it has messed up a lot of families. There's a lot of people in jail and a lot of grandparents raising their grandkids right now. Some of the top tens West Virginia showed up in as the worst. They're the fourth poorest. Second, when it comes to obesity, they have the eighth highest unemployment. That one changes all the time, so they're usually around seventh or eighth. But they are second when it comes to the most underpaid states. The good news is low cost of living and low housing costs. West Virginia had 13 appearances in the worst top 10 lists. Number nine, Arizona. Arizona, like every state on this list, has more than enough problems to give a governor a stroke, and not in a good way. One of the biggest problems with Arizona is the heat, obviously. It's the middle of the frickin' desert, and I know a lot of people really enjoy hot weather. But a good portion of the population can't stand 100 degree weather four months a year. I know it's not that bad, but I'm sure it feels like it. The only saving grace about their heat is it is a dry heat. I know that's like the stereotypical thing and it almost sounds like a joke, but I would much rather take Arizona's heat than Mississippi's heat or Alabama's heat. You're just constantly wet and sweating. It's horrible. Arizona also knocks it out of the park when it comes to water. They are always in a drought situation. You can't grow grass. You gotta have cactus for plants. There's always a worry about wildfires, especially during the dry spells, which is pretty much all the time. So yeah, Arizona's got its perks and it's definitely got its challenges. Now how they get on a list like this is how many times they showed up in top 10 worst lists. They're number two when it comes to air quality, as in the worst. Number two, first, when it comes to heat. Fourth, when it comes to political environment. Yes, that is a negative. That's a, 
It's a red state, but it's turning into a purple state right now. This is causing a lot of friction amongst the residents. Back in the old Tombstone, Arizona days, they had laws that you couldn't talk politics or religion while drinking. I think also you couldn't do it if you were armed. They should do that again. Arizona comes in fourth when it comes to domestic violence. There was one other one that I found while I was looking at the domestic violence stats that isn't really gauged on this thing, but I thought it's noteworthy. They lead the country in teen SA. So, you know, if you don't know what SA is, I can't say it without getting demonetized, but it's the unauthorized use of another human being's body against their will. Arizona showed up in 14 of the worst top 10 lists. Number eight, Oklahoma. Yep, the Sooner State. Oklahoma is the land of wide open spaces and not so wide open minds, bless its heart. This state sometimes feels like it's trying to figure out which way is up. From tornadoes that spin faster than my head when someone says free tacos, to a state's budget that is tighter than a pair of jeans after a Thanksgiving dinner, Oklahoma sure knows how to keep things interesting. And don't even get me started on the weather. In the summer, this place is about as hot as a jalapeno enema. Then the winter rolls around and it turns into the frozen tundra. Most people know this about Oklahoma, but they're still moving there. Oklahoma is slowly becoming one of the most popular states to move to, even though it sucks terribly. Just goes to show you, people will endure a lot for a cheap house and a low cost of living. Now, I did see a lot of different articles about Oklahoma having a whole lot of potholes and things like that. Their roads are bad, but I looked up their infrastructure ranking. They're actually 22nd in the nation, so I think that's kind of an illusion a lot of people there have. They've got a lot of open road. Maybe bad things are happening there. Who knows? Stay off the dirt roads. Oklahoma's fine when it comes to roads and infrastructure. When it comes to education, they're ranked the third worst in the nation. Oklahoma had 16 top 10 worst appearances. Number seven, Alabama. Alabama, the land of sweet tea, civil wars, and civil rights. This state is known for crimson tide football, a complicated history, and southern hospitality, where the humidity rivals a hot shower and the mosquitoes could qualify for the Olympics. Alabama's the typical southern state. Conversations about the weather anywhere. You could debate politics anywhere and be thrown out of certain establishments for suggesting that mayo belongs in banana pudding. Alabamans claim they have their priorities sorted out, but the rest of the world scratches their head and tries to figure out what the hell they're doing. This is a strange state. Like West Virginia, it's got a host of problems, but it has amazing people that know how to have a good time. So how does Alabama make it to number seven? Well, there's a few things. Like, they're the second most polluted state in the union. They're the third most humid state. They're seventh when it comes to poverty. And they're fifth when it comes to gun violence. They're also seventh when it comes to workplace safety. Alabama showed up 16 times in the worst top 10 lists. Number six, Kentucky. Kentucky used to be the punchline for many hillbilly jokes back in the day. Somewhere around the mid-1980s, West Virginia shot past Kentucky in the punchline Olympics. Kentucky's biggest hurdles always have something to do with poverty. In the bluegrass state, it is tough for a lot of folks to get by, find a good job, and even put food on the table. Then there's their education. Some areas are lagging behind so much when it comes to funding for their schools, it's almost like they're denying a lot of their students a fair shot at a successful life. Then there's healthcare. Healthcare in Kentucky really boils down to access. Compared to a lot of other states, they have fewer clinics, fewer doctors, and fewer hospitals per capita. The quality of healthcare is great, it's just getting in to see a doctor is the biggest problem here. They also have some infrastructure problems, but really Kentucky gets on the suckage list because of poverty, gun violence, and domestic violence. Kentucky ranks as the ninth poorest state. They rank 10th in gun violence. They are first when it comes to domestic violence. 45.4% of women in Kentucky have been the victim of some form of domestic violence. They come in second to S assault. Now, just off of Kentucky for a second, the absolute worst state when it comes to S assault is Alaska, and they are almost triple the rate that Kentucky is. When it comes to schools, Kentucky has the sixth lowest graduation rate. Kentucky showed up on 16 of the worst top 10 lists.
Number five, New Mexico. New Mexico's got a history of suckage. They always seem to show up on just about any negative list there is, from murder rate to the athlete's foot rate and everything in between. But as far as desert states go, one could argue that this is the most beautiful desert state we have. It is beautiful, I'll give it that. What's not beautiful is its laundry list of nightmare situations going on here daily. High crime, lowest literacy rate, and poverty rate. They're all scraping the bottom of the barrel. One other interesting fact, they have the third highest repeat offender rate. Yep, inmates released from prison in New Mexico have a 49% chance of getting locked up again, or recidivism is what they call it. The worst is Alaska, and that's 61%. The lowest, oddly enough, is South Carolina, 21%. While I was researching that one, I happened to come across countries with their recidivism. Norway has the absolute lowest. It's like one out of every 15 inmates will end up back in jail for some reason or another. New Mexico comes in second for residents on public assistance. Yeah, some form of welfare. They come in second place for that one. They're the third poorest state and the state with the seventh highest gun violence rate. 22.7 people are a victim of gun violence for every 100,000 residents. New Mexico shows up on 18 of the worst top 10 lists. Number four, California. Yep, California made the list, and I'm sure a lot of you think it should be number one because that's what you hear and all the horrible things going on in California. It's just a nightmare, and I know they paint this horrible picture like it's a freaking war zone with a Hollywood sign still intact. The fact is, California is a nightmare situation in a lot of respects. Homeless, cost of living, housing. But they have a lot of good things that put them on number four. Opportunity, that's one. They have a really high rate of opportunity, meaning your future looks good and you could probably find a job if you're looking for one. Their economy is outstanding. Their domestic violence is low. Their health care is excellent. Infant mortality is low. Obesity rate is low. Their infrastructure is pretty good. They got great weather and plenty of things to do. Now, where they suck are a lot of different things. Traffic, believe it or not, their schools aren't great. Housing costs, obviously, cost of living is horrible. But some of the ones that stood out for California that eh, might be a little surprising, worst air quality, absolute worst. They have the worst high school graduation rate. Yes, if you include Washington, D.C., they rank 51st in the nation. They are the least safest state for workplace. Now that could be everything from being run over by a forklift to workplace violence. This is another one that might shock you. They are fifth when it comes to tax burden. Everyone is under the illusion they're the absolute worst when it comes to taxes. It's actually New York followed by Hawaii, Vermont, Maine, then California. Now that's all taxes combined. If they're missing one, like let's say they don't have a sales tax or something, they make up for it other places. California showed up on 18 of the top 10 worst lists. Number three, Mississippi. You know, on this one, I feel like I'm beating a dead horse. Everybody knows the Magnolia State has been a nightmare since forever. I mean, you got to go back to the Civil War days when they were one of the wealthiest states we had. Absolutely. When cotton was all the rage, payroll was non-existent in most cases. They were doing pretty good. What I will mention, to be fair, in recent years, Mississippi has climbed up the food chain when it comes to education. They were always the bottom of the barrel. It's like they didn't even think about really putting much effort into it till I would say the 1980s, maybe late 1980s. They did like the bare minimum. I would say around 95, 99, they really started picking up steam. And when it comes to education, it takes a lot and a lot of time to really climb out of a bad hole and catch up with the rest of the states. They're doing an excellent job. Their universities are excellent now, but they have a lot of things that drag them to the bottom of the barrel. First, in poverty. They are the absolute poorest state we have. They are third when it comes to worst graduation rate. Now, I will tell you one thing that sounds strange. I just praise them for all their efforts they've made towards school. They used to be the bottom of the barrel, like I said, and it wasn't even close. Now, there's a lot of factors to this. It is very much a rural state. And in a lot of rural states, you have low graduation rates because a lot of kids will go to school till they're a junior or whatever, and then they go work on the family's farm, or they get into some kind of agricultural work, which in a lot of cases, they don't need an education. Mississippi is the absolute worst when it comes to gun violence. 28.6 people for every 100,000 will be the victim of gun violence 
this year. They're number one when it comes to obesity and number one when it comes to automobile fatalities. Now, that one wasn't one of the ranking 30 that we had, but I just wanted to throw that in there because I thought that was amazing. I would have assumed that had something to do with states that have a lot of giant interstates and a lot of traffic. Mississippi showed up on 20 of the 30 top 10 worst lists. Number two, Arkansas. Arkansas is another interesting state. It's a lot like Mississippi. It's a lot like Alabama. It is very much a Southern state. Now, I make fun of Southern states all the time. My family's from Mississippi, spent a lot of time there, gotten to know a lot of people from the South. I spent time there in the military. My problem isn't really with the people of these states. It's how they've been run for decades and decades. So it's really the politicians I have a problem with. Arkansas is a perfect example. And their problems go way beyond when Bill Clinton was in charge. I keep getting emails and comments about how their current governor is the worst governor ever. Now, I don't think she is. She's actually not doing a terrible job other than she had some issues with questionable purchases for her office from a friend's company. I saw one thing on the news where the guy was saying that she paid $19,000 for this lectern. People were saying it was like a $1,500 lectern, not a penny more. If you don't know what a lectern is, it's like a little podium they use when they're giving speeches. First day I was in college, uh, there's some paperwork up near the lectern in the front of the class. And I asked someone where they got uh, some piece of paper we're supposed to look at. And he said it's up there by the lectern. And I'm looking around for a person. I thought that meant like the lecturer. I didn't know it was like a podium thing. Yeah, he started laughing when I he realized I didn't know what he was talking about. And then the jackass loudly said the lectern is that podium thing, not a person. And there's a lot of giggles. Arkansas is the fourth poorest state. They are seventh when it comes to the worst high school graduation rate, eighth when it comes to gun violence with 22.6 people being victims of gun violence for every 100,000 residents, eighth for domestic violence, third for reoffenders, and third for automobile fatalities. Arkansas showed up on 20, just like Mississippi, on the worst top 10 lists. All right, before we get to number one, if you're looking to move to another state, there is a website called Home and Money that will get you in touch with a real estate agent anywhere in the country. And it also has all kinds of other things to help you on your home buying journey, so to speak. It's in the description area below. All right, on to number one. And number one, Louisiana. Ho, 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 Louisiana. Louisiana has a lot of problems going for it, but it also has the French Quarter, so that's pretty fun. By the way, if you ever go to the French Quarter, I encourage you to go. It's a lot of fun. Make sure you keep your wallet in your front pocket, things like that. Don't pull your cell phone out in front of a bunch of people you don't know. Don't get too terribly drunk, but have a good time. It is quite a sight to see. My piece of advice to you is do not get a hotel room near the French Quarter. I made that mistake and got a hotel on Bourbon Street because I thought it would be cool. Oh my God, I didn't sleep for two days. But Louisiana, once you get past New Orleans, has a lot of problems. Crime is horrible in this entire state. They have the second worst state capital in the nation. Mississippi has the absolute worst, Jackson. But Baton Rouge is almost as bad, is one of the most violent cities in the nation, just wrecked with poverty and everything else. But the whole state's like that. Louisiana shows up always in the bottom three whenever you're doing a worst state list. Almost every single thing, as you'll see in a second here. Louisiana ranks second when it comes to poverty. They're the second poorest state in the nation. Second when it comes to gun violence. They're the absolute worst when it comes to workplace safety. They're fourth when it comes to obesity. And second when it comes to the most natural disasters. Flooding, wildfires, homicidal strippers. They got it all. Louisiana showed up on 23 of the worst top 10 lists. All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Now go out, have a great day. Be nice to each other.